what, what, what are your thoughts on the on the Roe v. Wade being overturned? I'm against abortion. The Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe versus Wade has left many women with new questions about their rights, their bodies and their futures. It's also led some men to reconsider their own plans by getting a vasectomy. There's been some talk with some 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 people saying we need to protect life. The sperm is that that's the seed of life. Um, so would, would you be in favor of, of all males who are not married uh, getting vasectomies? No. And what about you? To each their own. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And earlier this summer, Roe v. Wade was thrown down by the all-powerful conservative six. Six people got to dictate to the American people where their freedoms begin and end. And six people set this nation back 50 years into the past. Clarence Thomas said yesterday, maybe we should take a look at the, the same-sex marriage ruling. Um, is that something you think we should, we should look at as well? Why do I think of gay marriage? I don't believe in gay marriage. You don't believe it? Mm. Yeah. You, you don't think that two men or two women should be able to get married? Would, would you like to see them reverse the decision? Yes. And, 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 and why, why is that? Just how I was I brought believe. up and that's how I believe. Okay. And you, you mentioned it a couple times, to each their own, right? It is a to each their own, but everybody should have a respect in their own um, biblical sense. So to each their own, but you don't want gay people getting married and you don't want women choosing what to do with their body. Right. Sure, to each their own until I say you can't. If I were to read their minds, I imagine those two would also say, America is a free country. People are free to believe in whichever God they want, so long as that God has the same value as theirs. But she gave it away when she said, Everybody should have a respect in their own um, biblical sense. Not everyone believes in the Bible. Not everyone believes in any religious book. I am so sick of religious right-wingers crying whenever people tell them not to force their values on others. I don't care what any book says. People have the right to choose what happens to their body. People have the right to choose who they marry. If they don't want to do those things, no one is forcing them. It's not a threat to their way of life for people to believe differently, but they act like we're taking away their rights when we don't agree with them. Well, how about my right to exist? I'm a queer non-binary person. I live in the real world. I'm not a made up religion. There's no proof any gods exist, but there is proof of my existence because, hi, I'm here. Yet so many Christians, particularly right-wing ones, insist it's the other way around. It's a choice to be bigoted. It's a choice to hate. It's a choice to be intolerant. No one gets to blame it on a book and upbringing. Now, if any of them are watching, let's see if they can read my mind. Republican leaders couldn't care less about life or any other cause outside of their own pocketbooks or political power. Pandering to the fundamentalists is simply part of their electoral map strategy. They must hold the Bible Belt, a group they otherwise would have no hope of securing by criminalizing abortion. Republicans are not caring, giving, compassionate, or any other quality that is remotely Christ-like. In fact, they're quite the opposite. They simply see opportunity. Opportunity to exploit the extreme religious communities by weaponizing and demonizing a political issue to win over their support. It's part of their algorithm to take over American politics in a world where they have no majority support on any of the stances that they take. In thanks, the Republicans will ship more jobs out of middle America, raise working class taxes, double down on the crippling effects of climate change, and eliminate voting rights to keep themselves in absolute power perpetually, all in the name of their personal greed at the expense of the voters. But it doesn't matter because they've taken a stance on a one-issues voter topic, and that's how minority viewpoints come to rule the majority, how corruption and power intersect towards dictatorship, how democracy weakens and decays. But we know how to fix it, and we have to do it now while we still can, while we still have an American system. These midterms find us on an absolute knife's edge. On the one hand, we can hold the House and expand our Senate majority to codify Roe, pass voting rights, end gerrymander, and secure democracy for future generations. On the other hand, this could be the beginning of the end of America as we know it. 